Welcome back to Retro Tech Toys. We've got this Mac SE30 that we had in the last video where we did a recap on the logic board, but unfortunately the CRT has stopped working correctly. If you remember, it had that line going down the center before, and I don't know if that was indicative of what was to come. It turns on, but the CRT itself does not work, and it's time to go ahead and replace it, and that's not a problem because I'm gonna go ahead and use the CRT from my SE Super Drive that I featured on the channel before, that's just gonna become a parts unit for now because I'd much rather get this working and that CRT is nice and bright. Also, another problem with this is that the disk drive isn't working correctly. Sometimes I can get a disk to go in and sometimes I can't. So we'll need to take a look at that. But first, here is this disgusting analog board. Uh, you can see all just the dust and the gunk and the mold and the crap that I wasn't able to get off the last video. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get it off on this video. And I'm just gonna use cotton swabs and I'm gonna use some IPA. You can see the dirt all over this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up and I'm not gonna bore you guys with everything. I'm gonna speed up a lot of the cleaning process and cut some of it out, but I'll let you come along with me for some of it because it's pretty interesting stuff in my opinion. I wanna get this thing running properly and uh, let's go ahead and just get it nice and clean. I don't know where this thing sat. I know it came from New York is where it shipped from. And I don't know if it's because uh, the person might've lived close to the water or if they had it in, the, in a basement, like a damp basement, but this thing has rust all over it as you saw in the last video. And uh, the chassis has got a couple of rust spots too. And we're gonna go ahead and fix that up as well. I don't know if you remember, but the mount for the network card also had some rust and we're gonna fix that and replace that with the SE's drive mount. And I'm gonna go ahead and blow off this hard drive and its enclosure just to kind of get some of the basic dust off of it. And here's this awful disk drive. Look at this thing. This was after I picked a little dust off of it because I couldn't help myself. No wonder it wouldn't take a disc. So I'm gonna hit it with some compressed air as much as I can and get as much of this off as possible. And then after I do that, I'm gonna hit it with uh, more cotton swabs and more IPA in hopes that we can get this thing nice and cleaned. And even though it was reading discs when I could get a disc in there, I'm gonna go ahead and give the heads a light clean as well. The problem that I was having with this drive is sometime the mechanism would allow a disc to go in, it would take it and it would suck it down into the drive, and other times the drive mechanisms would not work, like the gears and stuff, they would just get stuck, and I couldn't get a disc in there, and I know you can see some of that rust. So we've got as much of the caked on gunk as we could off of it. Now let's go ahead and hit it with this cotton swab, and uh, like I said, I'm going to speed a lot of this up, but I just kind of want to talk about this SE30. I'm really happy to have one and I'm more than happy to use my SE Super Drive as a parts unit as much as possible. I hope I can get this clean if I can and I can get it working despite the rust and the nastiness. That would be cool, but if I can't get it working, I'm going to go ahead and take the disk drive out of my SE Super Drive. All right, so we got this disk drive cleaned up as much as we can, and I've got the heads cleaned out too, and I can't do much about the rust, and I'm not gonna completely disassemble this, because honestly, I'm not an expert when it comes to completely disassembling disk drives, all the small gears and parts, no thanks. I'm gonna go ahead now and clean off this front case. I'm gonna use a little baking soda on it. Once we get that baking soda scrubbed on good, I'll get it wiped off and then I'll probably hit it with some IPA. And I don't wanna to do too much because I don't wanna take the texture off by hitting it with something abrasive. And the scrubber that I'm using does have an abrasive side and I am kinda of using it, but I'm not going too hard on it. Because like I said, I would rather just take this thing out later and retro bright it rather than scrub it white and completely ruin the texture that the machine is supposed to have. I just don't wanna do that and we're not gonna do that. And here's where we're going to put it back together. And I know some of you wondered about the screwdriver I'm using. A couple of people were afraid that I was using an electric drill. This is not a drill. 
This is a low powered screwdriver and I have it set to where it is slightly weaker than hand strength. So no worries there whatsoever. Now that we've got this back together, I'm going to start working on putting the CRT in and I need to warn you guys like I always do to please be extremely careful when you are repairing or working with CRTs. You are dealing with voltages that can and will kill you if you don't work with them correctly. Always make sure that you discharge the CRT before you do anything with it. Please make sure that you know something about working on CRTs. It is extraordinarily dangerous. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get this CRT put in. And like I said, this is one that came from my Mac SE SuperDrive, and it's a nice, bright, crisp, clear CRT, which is great. The analog board on that other machine had some issues, but that's not a problem because the analog board on the SE30 is perfectly fine. I looked at the capacitors, and I will be monitoring those capacitors because I will be taking this unit apart at least once a week to do upgrades and to check on it and i'm probably going to go ahead and order a set of caps for the analog board but for now until i do i'm just going to keep an eye on them right now they look perfectly fine and let's go ahead and get this crt bolted back to the outer case and we'll be good to go all right let's go ahead and reassemble everything I've got the SE that I'm using for parts sitting here, and I've got the SE30 that we're completely repairing and upgrading sitting here, and I'm just going to put this SE30 back together. It's not that hard once you, you know, kind of figure it out and you've done it a few times. I don't know if you can see that, but I changed out that rusty mount where the network card daughter board goes, and it's so much nicer, perfectly clean. And someday I hope to get this SE re-restored, but we'll figure that out later. Right now, I just want to get this SE30 working because I've always wanted one. I'm going to go ahead and get it turned on, and I know there's some baking soda that I left from the cleaning process, and I'll get that wiped off in a little bit here. Right now, I just want to turn this thing on and make sure everything works. I really want to test that disk drive as well. And we've got power, and I'll adjust the dimensions of the... CRT display later. I did fix the widescreen, but I've blown it up a little bit too much. I need to knock it down a little bit. But hey, look how crisp that CRT is. Like I said, it's a really, really nice display. It's not tired like the old SE30 display was. There's no line going through the middle. It just works, and it works really well. This is really cool. Let me go ahead and wipe some of this mess off a little bit. I said I'd try to do my best to get some of that cleaned up. Yeah, that baking soda doesn't want to come off, but I'll take care of it, whatever. And uh, let's go ahead and get ready to test out this disk drive. I think that's going to be the most important thing here. Here comes the moment of truth. Let's see. And nope, it's stuck still. That's fine. I'm going to cut away and come back after I switch it out with the new one. All right, we're back. We've got the new disk drive in from the old SE. Let's give that a shot now. See if we can get this thing to load a disk. Yeah, it took it perfectly. I mean, it took it immediately. So that's a good start. And like I said, I know this disk drive works, but let's just make sure it works in this particular computer. And just like I thought it would, it popped right up with Stuff It Expander, which is what was on that disk. So we have a working disk drive, everything's cleaned up, we have a brand new, bright, beautiful CRT in this thing. I'm pretty happy about that. Let's try it one more time. There it goes. Very, very, very good. I am so excited to get this thing up and running. It's all cleaned up. It is mostly restored now. It just needs a good retro writing and probably a recap on the analog board. And aside from that, I do want to put in some upgrades. There are several things I could do. I was thinking about putting a CD-ROM in it, but I don't really want to hack and cut things open. Maybe there's a good SCSI external CD-ROM that I could use? I don't know. If you know anything like that that you think would work in this, let me know if you have any advice on what I should do next. I'm definitely going to upgrade the RAM and probably do some kind of an SSD solution. So anything else, let me know. And here it is all running, restored, put back together. 
it looks great and i'm sorry that the color goes super wacky and the brightness goes super wacky on my camera towards the end of this video i have no idea what's going on with that maybe it was the lighting that i was using when i recorded this i don't know either way this thing works now and i'm really really happy i'm gonna do some upgrades like i said and do a few more restoration things Look at it sitting there with the Apple IIc that we recently restored on the channel just a couple of videos ago. Doesn't that look great? They look like they were meant to be together. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching Retro Tech Toys. You're going to see this computer again really soon. Both of them, actually. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.